Welcome to the Expansion Project with Alex Oradola and Stephanie Chenis. Listen and process life with us. Welcome. Hello. Hey guys. Welcome back to the Expansion Project. Whoop whoop. And uh, we're back. We're back at it again. It's a beautiful thing. After uh, after our Thanksgiving episode, our Friendsgiving, best Friendsgiving episode. Yes. Um, we. We are on the uh, precipice of the most wonderful time of the year. For oh, real it is. this time. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. I'm here for it. I know. I know. We were just, um, uh, Steph and I just had a meeting, uh, like our staff meeting, and uh, we were just talking about, I think we mentioned how lightning fast this month went by. and flew. Uh, Yeah. Just absolutely flew by. And uh, now we're literally tomorrow. It's tomorrow, right? December. Yeah, but when they listen to this, it oh, yeah. will be December. It will be December. <laughs> How guys... crazy is that? Happy December. Happy December, everyone. Merry Christmas. You made it. We did it. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're we're in the Christmas season. We are. And uh, we <laughs> we were just eating brownies a second ago. <laughs> Shh, Alex. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> You're not so serious. <laughs> this way, we'll, we'll, we'll... I may or may not have stole them. <laughs> oh, crap. Should we start over? No. Okay. It's fine. We cut nothing out. Are you sure? We are who we are. I stole brownies. <laughs> we just ate them. I was hungry. Yeah, I was hungry too. Thank I you. I was hungry. <laughs> All right, so we <laughs> so we're chilling, and uh, tomorrow or today, when you're listening, is December, and. Uh, we thought that we would just kind of take some time to talk about a, a specific thing that you may or may not be feeling in the Christmas season. Uh, we're going to talk about loneliness, loneliness. Or, or isolation or mm-hmm. um, something in that realm. Obviously, it's a bit more of a serious topic. And, you know, we, we um, saw that you guys responded really well to our anxiety episode, so we felt that we hit some more serious topics, you know, heading into the holiday season. Um, And so we're going to talk a bit about that today. Um, But just to kind of give you a uh, a heads up for next next time we record. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why don't you tell them what's up for next time, Steph? Oh, we should call it the best Friendsmas ever. (laughs) Yes. To play off of our best Friendsgiving. So next episode, Alex and I, we're going to have our friends miss on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So we would like our listeners to give us some feedback. What would you like to hear? Would you like um, a Yankee swap? Um, Would you like us to come dressed in our favorite Christmas (laughs) gear? For you to hear. Um, (laughs) For you to hear. I'll take a picture. (laughs) Yeah, I know you will. Um, Anything Christmassy you think we should do on the podcast, if you want us to sing a Christmas carol, ooh, ooh that I'll might be to, a good one. You might have to veto that. I may, <laughs> I may or may not play Alex's favorite Christmas song, mm. but you'll have to wait for that one. Mm. Um, but yeah, let us know. You can email us at expansion podcast, podcast gtcc mm-hmm. at gmail.com. Yep. Give us all of the feedback you want to see on our Friends Miss episode. There you go. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, a bit more of a fun episode next time. So today is a bit more serious. Next time is going to be fun. We're going to have fun and enjoy the Christmas season um, to Um, get you ready for what's going to happen. But I still wore my reindeer ears. Yes. So (laughs) you may have heard it on the (laughs) audio listeners. Obviously, everybody's an audio listener. But uh, Steph is wearing... uh, Reindeer Just ears. Reindeer, reindeer antlers, reindeer ears, whatever you want to call them. And, uh, you know. Spreading that Christmas shit everywhere yeah. I go. You just have to. <laughs> I've come to expect this from you. Um, <laughs> it's just normal. So she just showed, showed up with that on. and uh, you Why know, not? Yeah. Why, why not? not? Exactly. There's no limits. No limitations <laughs> There's here. There's no limits. <laughs> <laughs> if we didn't have a motto, we have a motto. <laughs> No expansion, limits. Expansion project. There's no limits. Oh, there are. <laughs> no, that's so true. Oh, man. No limits. That's Mm-mm. the best. All right. So that's that. Um, yeah, well, really quick. Uh, Apple review. Leave us a five-star review, and we'll love you forever. And uh, 
thank you for that. For, for we those appreciate that you. Yes. And uh, she mentioned it before, expansion podcast at GTCC. Um, no, <laughs> expansion podcast GTCC at gmail.com. Um, leave us your messages, requests, anything like that. We, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. And then uh, thirdly, we have something new. Brand new. Brand new. I feel like we needed like a like a horn, like a bum bum bum. Oh yeah, like, like a something. Mega right. horn, yeah. I'll okay. see what I can do. We need sound effects. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, if I edited this and put it in, you heard it. You heard it I by gotta, now. I gotta Google this. <laughs> okay, so we have coming at you mm. in Instagram now. Oh shoot. So you can find us on Instagram, and we are the Expansion Project podcast on instagram yep so you can stay up to date um with all of our you know fun stuff that we do shenanigans yeah we'll do like a little behind the scenes thing and Mm. then um we'll just go from there what do you think about that yeah yeah, yeah. i got a surprise for you Uh. wait wait no (laughs) no (laughs) is it not working whatever it is what's happening oh hold on Oh my gosh. Check that out. Check that out. Check it out. <laughs> Go ahead. Bow, 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 bow. Stuff's here with the effects. Ah, yeah. I came in clutch. I just downloaded that app Did while you I was really? talking about <laughs> the just, Instagram. You were just stalling for time this whole time. Like, I was like, please follow us on Instagram. Yes. And it's downloaded. Okay. <laughs> but now we have an air horn, so there, there we, we go. go. Oh, amen. Um <laughs> That was the best. That's going to be fun to hear later. Um, bow, bow, bow. I'm sorry. We're serious today, guys. <laughs> no, We're talking we about totally, a serious topic today. We could totally be a little goofy. Um, I think it'll definitely help. So, yes. So, that's all that stuff out of the way. We're going to talk a bit, bit about um, isolation and solitude and loneliness. And um, Steph and I were literally yesterday figuring out, like... <laughs> What should we What should we talk about today? Um, just so you know that we put so much, you know, we're we're way ahead of the game we're all the so, time. We're so prepared. <laughs> we're so prepared. <laughs> um, but Steph, um, just so you know, Steph is, is usually the one that comes up with the, like the really cool ideas that we do. Um, pretty much ninety percent of the ideas we do in podcasts are her. No. Um, they are. It's <laughs> she, a team. It's a team effort because <laughs> Alex always says yes. There you go. <laughs> So she, uh, we were just discussing and she was like, you know, when you, when you look at the holiday season, right, obviously you see the obvious things like, you know, just joy and family and presents and, you know, Santa and all that stuff. But like, um, a big part of the holiday days that you don't see and that you don't hear about are the lonely parts. Right. Like, you know, um, I, I speak for Steph, but I'm sure she'll agree. We're blessed. Yeah. her and I are very blessed and we have, you know, families and we have, um, connection and we have our church family mm-hmm. and just like mm-hmm. our leaders who love us and we love them. And it's just a lot to lean back on and to yeah. just embrace this year. Right. Um, but that's not the case for everybody. There right. are people who have less and people who maybe have nothing, um, as far as like connection. Right. Um, and warmth. And so we thought it might be a good idea to talk briefly, as Steph's phone rings. Silence uh, my phone. <laughs> Steph probably sorry. didn't even pick up. I shouldn't have said <laughs> anything. <laughs> um, we thought it would be a good idea to just kind of talk about it and, you know, just kind of give our two cents and, yeah. you know, maybe give you a little comfort this holiday season if you feel like that's you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's important because, like you said, everyone talks about, like, the holiday cheer mm-hmm. and all of the fun stuff that comes with Christmas, but... We also know that there are people who, like, struggle through the holidays. And sometimes I feel like that gets overlooked or they may feel like they get overlooked. Like, they might say, like, well, what about me? Who who can I talk to? Who can I process life with? Mm -hmm. And that's basically why we're here. We just process life with Mm. our listeners and each other. Um, So that's why I thought it was important for people to know, like, you're not alone and that we're here. Mm -hmm. And if you have to process anything, Mm -hmm. um, this is like a safe place. Yeah, for sure. And that's what I love. Yeah, yeah. That's what we wanted to establish with this in the first place. And so I absolutely agree with that. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, so we're going to talk about that. Um, if you are alone, if you feel alone, um, 
like genuinely like you don't feel like you have many people in your life but also another another thing uh that i was hoping to talk about is if you feel alone but you maybe aren't alone maybe you have people in your life but you just feel alone um and that's a very personal thing for me Mm -hmm. um because i you know i i went through depression pretty heavily for most of my like teenage life and even some of my like preteens and um in young adulthood, it was a, a huge chunk of my life and yeah, I, of varying course. degrees of it. Yeah. And, and, uh, at its worst was me feeling alone when I had people around me, which is really horrible, um, in a lot of ways, but yeah, so I guess we can just approach this in any way. Um, I, I guess, uh, I'll just kind of open it up with a question, but, um, I guess, uh, Steph, do you, have you or do you currently struggle with any form of like loneliness or maybe isolation or separation or anything of the of the sort yes Mm. of course and i feel like sometimes that doesn't get well sometimes like i don't talk about it obviously but sometimes you know people would maybe not assume that I would struggle with that, but I totally do. Mm. Um, <clears throat> feeling alone and not knowing, like, who can I call? Just, you know, I struggle with it just as much as anyone else does. Yeah. So I think that's why it's, like, important for us to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, and um, I, I think that um, in that same vein, you know, I think people feel like they can't open up about it because they feel if they do feel alone and they're not that they can't like that it feels kind of wrong to be like right i'm lonely you know what i mean for those that actually are you know genuinely lonely and and isolated to to kind of confess that um but uh yeah i i I do too and yeah from time to time you know i kind of feel that um and, uh, you know, just lately it's been a lot less, but right. I've gone through seasons of, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, feeling alone. And, um, I actually remember talking to my students about this. Um, but like I used to listen to all sorts of artists back in the day, secular and non-secular. And, um, there was one rap artist that, um, that I won't, that I won't name. Uh, but he, <laughs> he, he wrote this verse that, that really got to me. He's like, I'm, you know. Uh, I'm I'm not always alone, but I always feel alone. And he was talking about his status. He had he had climbed to the top of the rap game at this moment and was just kind of feeling what celebrity and fame was giving him. Yeah. And he had this like profound re- revelation, a revelation, revelation, yeah, revelation that you know. Um, that he had all these people around him, right? Like friends and yep. new friends and old friends and yep. just like all these people and parties and all this stuff. But he, for the first time, or maybe not for the first time, but significantly felt this profound loneliness. Um, and I'm like, I felt that too, you know, like growing up, um, my family was just very social and like to have like, parties and so we'd have family over and they'd just be really loud like super loud yeah um and just people moving around and kids and all All the time constant yeah yeah and Mm -hmm. and you feel like in that atmosphere you know like it'd be so easy to feel like i don't know at peace with who you are and who you're with and that you have people in your corner but i remember feeling my loneliest then it's like this idea that I can't connect with any of these people mm-hmm. um, right now or maybe ever, right? The the anxiety, right? right. No, I'll never be able to connect. Or right. It just makes you feel even more isolated than if you actually were alone. Right. Um, because the hope of like finding people and then getting rid of that loneliness is gone because there are people here and I still feel this way. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I remember having a couple moments like that where I was like, I should not be feeling this, but right. I am. Right. And I don't know what to do about it. No, I know. Yeah. I've been there. For me, I think it started um, when my dad passed away. Mm. And, you know, because then I was, I fell into like a depression and all of that. 
Um, but also, like, I didn't want to live life without him, mm. so I wouldn't do certain things because he wasn't here. Yeah. Like, I thought even, this is going to sound crazy, but I'm going to say it because this is what we do. We'd be open. All right. um, <clears throat> I was like, when, you know, Jared and I talk about having kids, I'm like, man, my dad's not going to be here. And so, like, that, like, took, like, a big part of me. And I'm like, I don't want to do any big thing without him. But I lived that way for so long that I had to realize if my dad's here or not, what would he want me to do? Yeah. You know? Um, he's not thinking he's not in heaven being like, oh, Steph, don't do that without me. Mm-hmm. You know? Of course he's not. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's with God. I mean, yes, he's like yes. talking to Moses, doing yes. all the things up there. So it's like, that's not his concern. So mm. I feel like it shouldn't be mine too. Yeah. But for a while it was, and I was stuck and I wouldn't do certain things. And I would isolate myself because right. I didn't want to hurt someone's feelings, but he, he's not here. Yeah. And it's impossible for me to hurt his feelings. Yeah. Yeah. And so that took me a really long time to get out of that, thinking and just live life yeah because for so long i wasn't and i was just stuck yeah and miserable yeah and that plays into so much in your life when you're just stuck Mm -hmm. somewhere like it affects everything your family your friends your mental health everything um so i kind of just really had to get with god and be like okay this is a me issue Mm -hmm. and i had to look at myself which is very hard but I had to look at myself and just say, you know what? I have to give, literally give this to God and I have to go on living my life knowing that my dad would be so proud and see every aspect of what I'm doing now. Mm. And for me, um, it took years, like literally years for me to just let that go. Yeah. But I had to because I had to live life. Yep. Like I couldn't just be like, oh, I'll do this, but I won't do that. I can't pick and choose. I, yeah. I I need to live life for what, for the time that we have here. Yeah. I might as well do what God wants me to do. Right. Instead of, you know, mm. doing yeah. what I think is best. Yeah. Yeah. And you wouldn't think that loneliness would work that way. <clears throat> like no. it would restrict you from doing things. But it does. Um. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of multifaceted in that way. There's like layers to it. Right. <clears throat> and um, obviously I super relate to that. Like, yeah. We both lost our fathers yeah um kind of early and it's just like i also have certain things that i avoid you know and uh and i'm healing from that you know what i mean but like some things that i avoid doing uh because i partially because i feel guilty right and partially because i think the loneliness would sink in Mm -hmm. if i did it and i I look to my right or my left and i'm like he would be here i know yeah he would be here and he would be very loud um and he's not and that's a bummer and uh i don't know if i'm ready to do that yet you know just to have that sink in um and it's actually uh crazy like the day this releases will be december 1st and he passed on december 3rd wow. um and so yeah it's very soon and it's all the feels are, yeah. are in there and and the more years that pass the the more fond it is right you know I, i'm focusing a lot more on the positives and the negatives exactly. um but yeah, that feeling of loneliness is real when you lose someone. And obviously, like I ha- have so much family that's still around and that's right. still here. But when you're lonely, when when you're lonely, it's it's you know you, you feel it regardless of what you actually have. You just feel it. It's like he's he's gone. He was a big part of my life. Yeah. Like like he was there f- for my entire life growing up. You right, know, like right. he was always around. And yeah, he was working, but he. You know, he'd always be home and it's just like all these memories. It's like if he's gone, then, you know, like you just feel it. Yeah. And um, and I'm sh- sure you can relate. But it's just like, um, yeah, yeah. It's like you lose you lose one person and it, it doesn't matter how many people you lose. But when you lose people that significant in your life, you can definitely feel lonely. Right. Um, and it can it can do some damage. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just. <clears throat> It's like a tough place to be in because especially like when we're in ministry and we're so surrounded by so many people, it's like you still want to be like, uh, hi, 
Yeah. I need someone. Yeah. You know? Um, and it's important, you know, if you feel like that, if you feel like you don't have someone, well, we're two people who are sitting here right now saying that you have us because you're hearing us say the exact same thing. Yeah. And if we're saying it, how many more other people are there who are not saying it, but feel that they need someone too. Yeah. And this is the time of the year where we need to just rally around each other, be there for one another and just let go of whatever, I don't know, whatever you have in your heart or in your mind towards someone just, you know, yeah, that's not how Jesus was right. when he interacted with people. Mm-hmm. You know, you never know like who's sitting next to you in church that's hurting or who you meet in a grocery store that just needs someone to smile at them. You never know who's hurting and who feels alone. Yeah. But it's the step that you can take being bold, saying, mm-hmm. I'm with you. Yeah. Or I feel the same exact way. Let's go for coffee. Yeah. Yeah. And just talk. Mm hmm. What's wrong with people becoming friends? I yeah, know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and I also know it's hard because, you know, we were stuck in the pandemic for so long. Yeah. And then there, it's hard because it's a scary place for people to come out of that. Like it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have watched people who are still stuck and won't come out of that because mm-hmm. they're so gripped with fear. Yeah. They're alone. But it's like, reach out. You're not alone. Yeah. Because there are so many people who will hold your hand and walk you through your darkest days. Yeah. It's just, we have to like make that step. And it's so hard for us to do that. Mm -hmm. To say like, I'm alone. Like, it's scary to even say it out loud. Yeah. But how is anyone going to know if you don't say it? That's We're okay. just going to think everyone's fine. Everyone's yeah. doing great. Yeah. Like everyone's living life. But if you don't say it, yeah. then we don't know. Exactly. That's big. I, I resonate with that at many levels. I, cause I talked about me suffering from depression for mm-hmm. a good chunk of my life. I became an expert at hiding it. Right. It was really, you know, and that made me lonelier, but like, I'm also like a a guy and it's like guys just are great at that. Great at like masking it because of like, you know, the idea that we need to hide all of our emotions, but also we're experts at hiding it um, because we don't want to worry people, you know? And so we're, we're good at just like being good and being okay, even though we're not. Um, And I remember many occasions you know, where I just avoided interaction once again, because of the fear that I felt alone and like, you know, I'm just like, I'm not going to connect anyway. Um, and, uh, and I would turn people away. Um, but I do recall just, I'm trying to remember exactly, but I don't think I can, but I do remember a specific moment where, I did feel isolated for an extended period of time and I tried to kind of like connect with people. It just wasn't working. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do remember a moment in time where I, you know, I kept trying, you know, like I kept making the effort to try to connect with people. And it's like after a certain amount of time, something gave, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you, you have to try. I, I, if you're like me, You'll try once or twice and you'll be like, no, I'm not going to put myself out there again. It, it hurts too much. And you close back up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You close back up. And yeah. and if I hadn't continued to try or if I had friends who gave up on, on me that easily and was just like, all right, dude, like it's clear that you want to hang out with us. And right. um, like I literally had people who would forcibly like, <laughs> like, like we would get upset, like not because, you know, they would get upset because they know that I'm isolating and, and they would just like, you know, p- people that we're friends with now, like, yeah. you know, shout out to the crew and just like people that were very persistent in, in Never gave bringing up. me, yes. And bringing me along. And it was that persistence that I think the best metaphor is it, it broke through the ice. There yeah. was like a thick kind of like barrier that I set up because of what I had gone through. Um, and so like, I think that that's kind of the best advice that I can offer is like, it's not like a one-time thing. 
Right. If you do feel lonely and if you do feel alone, there's not going to be one single moment that you go out with people or you hang out with, you know, with people or go out to dinner with people where it's just like, bam, broken. Yeah, like it's you're, not going to cure it. You're, yes. Right. But like the persistence is the key where you start to realize that it's more than just connection and friendship. These are people, hopefully, that you're hanging out with that love you. Right. 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 Um, and it takes time to break through the barrier that you set up yeah. because of what you've gone through or the pain that you feel or the depression that you have. Um, it does take persistence. Speaking right. as somebody who was steeped in that, mm-hmm. um, it takes persistence. It takes consistency to just continue to try to open up, yeah. to try to let people in. Right. Um, and it's it's just key that you have friends in your life. Or people that you connect with that are understanding of that and right. will will be patient with you um, as you slowly begin to open up, you know. And that's what I love about church, you know. Like yeah. a lot of the stuff that we do here keeps that in mind. It's like, okay, we'll meet up every once in a while and we're all here to help each other. Right. Um, and we know you're going through stuff. Right. Because I'm going through stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we're here to be patient with each other and to – speak biblical principles to you and Mm -hmm. to give you God's wisdom so that you can overcome this barrier that maybe you're putting between you and other people, Mm -hmm. um, and to, to heal, you know, um, it's hard because even for me, when you're talking, I'm just thinking about so many people who were in my life that are no longer in my life. Yeah. Just for like, silly reasons like some of them were like my bestest friends yeah and it's like for me it's it was hard to call someone like a best friend again yeah because i didn't want to get hurt by that one person that knew everything about me who just walked out of my life yeah and it was it was hard Mm -hmm. and so yeah like we have all of these people around us but it's so nice to be like Oh, I can trust you. Yeah, yeah. But it takes time when you've been hurt by someone to get back to that point. Exactly. That's that, why yeah. you do have to be persistent. You can't give up after one time. Mm-hmm. And you have to just watch how you're going to heal in the process. Yeah. Like, that's all it is. That's it, yeah. And then for the people that are asking the people to hang out, don't stop asking. Yeah, please don't. Because how great was it for you that they didn't stop asking? It was, amazing. It was and, pivotal, yeah. You know, you had people who were pulling you in and pulling you in and pulling you in. And if you're that type of person that is pulling people in, don't stop. Mm-hmm. Because you don't know what you're doing for someone. You're helping them get through a pretty hard season that they might be in yeah absolutely stuck isolated Mm -hmm. yeah that's the worst and and uh something i just remembered too is uh there was a there was a weird kind of like i don't know messed up comfort i had sometimes when i was isolated because it felt like i was making my world smaller Mm -hmm. and it was just like easier to manage just me um but obviously that has its limits, you know? Right. Um, once again, speaking as a guy, that's something that we do. It's like, cool, I can manage me and the people that are most important to me. If you're a father or if you have a family or if you're, you know, man, you know, it's easier to take the the p- people closest to you and bring them into your own world and close off everything else because it's yeah. just easier. But you need people, even though it's harder to manage relationships so with people. I'm speaking to myself, man, because yeah. I, I <laughs> friendships were hard for me as like a, a dude who was bullied a lot. Yeah. You know, I just didn't want to deal with social interactions because they were difficult. But that made, that made me isolated. Right. And so, yes, it was e- easier to just deal with me and to close off everybody else. Yes, it was easier. But at a certain point when I needed to reach out to people, they weren't there. And that was the issue. And so it was partially because I created this isolation for myself and partially right. because of what I went through and my pain. But what what happened was when I needed people, when I, when I didn't know how to deal with what I was feeling or what I was going through, I didn't have anybody because I spent so much of my time closing people off. Yeah. Um, don't, don't make that mistake. Um, if you're me, if, if you're like me, if you feel like you relate to my, what I'm saying, like, please, please, please don't make that mistake. I know it's hard to connect with people. I know it's hard to, to 
be social. I know it's hard to be outgoing. Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't have to be a social butterfly, Not at but all. make the effort to connect with the people that are trying to connect with you. If mm -hmm. somebody is reaching out a hand to you, grab the hand, you know, yep. grab it. At least make an effort to show, hey, I know I'm not exactly where I want to be and where you may want me to be socially, but I am making an effort and I do appreciate what you're doing right now to exactly. try to connect with me. Right. Um, it means a lot. Please don't stop. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just grabbing a hand of somebody reaching out to you can communicate that message to them. Um, and it shows them that you really do appreciate what you're doing, even though it may not be landing the way that they expect or right. the way that you want it to, you know? Right. Um, people need people. Yeah. yeah. No one can do it alone. Mm hmm. I mean, if you, if you look at Jesus, he didn't do it alone. Nope. He was, he had 12 people beside him walking through the toughest times of his life, carrying, you know, everything he was going through, holding his hand and encouraging him. Hmm. So, I mean, even if we look at that for a second, like, if he needed people, we need people. Hmm. We do. We do. Yeah, the and, Bible does talk a lot about connecting social right. interactions and um but yeah no absolutely it's true yeah so we need each other we need help and uh i need help steph needs help we both need help we need all the help we, we can need get. all the help in the world <laughs> and so uh i guess my my directive to you listeners is if you feel alone even if you have people around you and you feel alone, or if you don't have anybody around you, um, make an effort to reach out. Yeah. Make an effort to reach out. Make an effort to connect in whatever small way that you can. Um, try to reach out to the people that are trying to connect with you. You may be surprised at how many people are trying, and maybe you didn't notice. Right. Um, and so... If you go to our church, then you already have a method in which to make connections. We have a ton of stuff going on, um, a ton of things at the at the church. Um, our Christmas party is coming up. That's a great place to connect with people. Um, December 10th. December 10th. 4 <laughs> p.m. to 7 p.m. There we go. There's going to be stuff. Alex and I will be emceeing. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we, got our we got our first gig. Yeah. <laughs> the expansion podcast will be emceeing. Um uh yeah and we have like ministries like men's and and women's and young adults and youth and all this stuff and um there's stuff going on it's stuff for you to be involved in places for you to connect it's mm -hmm. up to you to to make that effort and obviously i know it's not that simple it's not that easy i've been through it um but it does start with you and and i hope that you make that decision this holiday season and uh, just know that you don't have to do this alone. You really right. don't. You know. Um, and uh, we're 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 here for you. And obviously, we're here too. Yeah. So, like we said before, like reach out to us. I like uh, to think we make great friends. Yeah, we're, we're pretty dope friends. <laughs> I mean, Alex is still my friend, so that must say something. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're still <laughs> yeah, my friend. Same. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, reach out to us. Um, you know, send us an email on the pod, and if you see us, talk to us. Like. You know, we're here and, um, but, uh, yeah, wherever you are, even if you aren't in Rhode Island or go to our church, like, please like connect, yeah. connect, connect. So important. Yeah. And, uh, do it for you. Mm -hmm. Live your life. Live your life. Don't yeah. be stuck mm -hmm. because everyone deserves to live life mm -hmm. and you can make the change. Everyone has a choice and it's what you choose to do. Yeah. That's the thing. So we hope and we pray that you choose to put yourself first and live out your life the way God has intended you to live it. Mm. And that's not alone. And that's not in isolation. So. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. So we love you guys and we're praying for y'all as you uh, go through this holiday season, uh, whether it's a happy one for you or maybe less happy for you. Yeah. Um, we're pulling for you. And um just know that we love you. Just know that God loves you so much. So much. You have no idea how much God loves you. And um, and uh, we're, we're definitely pulling a room for you all. And uh, We love you all. Yeah. We appreciate real. each and every single one of you. Yes. But our I, hearts are definitely with you this holiday season. Yes, absolutely. Just so. know that. Yep. So I think that about wraps it up. Anything you want to add or... 
Oh, can we go back to being silly? Yes. <laughs> silly mode. I mean, I've been staring at your antlers this whole time. I've been wanting to move them <laughs> and distract you this yeah. whole time. <laughs> like, there was never a point in which that would be okay in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it was all serious I stuff. I was like, hmm, <laughs> it would have been when so can bad. I move the antlers? <laughs> <just did> <laughs> I know. Oh, no. Can you imagine? Yeah. You're like, <laughs> Man, real deep topic, like, and then you just bust out laughing. <laughs> See, we can be serious for yeah. about a half hour. Yeah, we can do it. We can manage in half hour bursts. Okay, um, but we have to go back to being silly now. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's um, it. And look, that comes with living life. Yeah. Uh-huh. So for you listening, you have known that Alex and I have gone through stuff, mm-hmm. but we can still process things, mm-hmm. but yet we can still live and have fun while processing through the hard things. Exactly. So stick with us. That's You'll the, have a great time. That's the moral. You will have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be. We can guarantee that. <laughs> It'll be fun. Faux show. Yeah. Oh, we should end on a high note. Yeah. Uh, what What do you... Oh, I'm no. going to blow the ham horn. <laughs> that was so many times. I know. All right. <laughs> On that note, uh, we love you guys. Uh, stay frosty out there. And, stay uh, frosty. <laughs> we'll see you next time. We love you. We love Bye. You. Bye. Bye.